am Makana Pang and I am 20 years old. Uh, I started surfing on my own when I was probably around three. Basically since I was one years old, I'd be going tandem with my dad out at Haliva. The most vivid memories I have from my childhood is piling into one of my dad's old uh, VW buses. But there was no back seats. So me and my sister would just sit on the ground and drive, yeah, in the bus and drive down to Haliva. We just started surfing um, down by Haliva, but not Haliva proper, but on the left, the Kayana Point of Haliva. And Dana would be on the beach, catching them and then pushing them out to me. And then when he got good enough, then we took him to the other side to catch the white water with the rest of the kids, you know. He was really passionate about surfing. You know, he always pound on the shaping room door. He goes, let's go surf tonight, this afternoon, man. It's, it's up. And I go, okay, let's go. Or the night before, he goes, can we go to VLAN before school? And I go, okay. He just like, run to the shower, like right before the bell rang, take a shower and just run across the street and go, go to school. Our elementary school, Sunset Beach Elementary, was uh, across the street from Pipeline. We'd be able to hear any contest that was going on, the Volcom, the Pipe Pro, or the Pipe Masters. We'd be able to hear the announcers while sitting in the classroom. Backside, Pipe Barrel coming out, yes! <laughs> hear the crowd screaming if someone got a crazy wave. You could hear the waves breaking, and we'd just wait to get out of school to go across the street and check it. And I think seeing all the pros coming in from around the world and sitting on the beach and watching them surf their heats kind of made me want to be like them. The first the person I knew out of my friend group was Kalani. And Noah and Baron were friends since like preschool time. And then we all met in first grade. We've always been around each other and seen each other in the water. So all those guys developed themselves through the Manahuni contests. And then they went to school together. There's a synergy about them, you know? It's just like when I was a kid, I hung with some guys that just, we just surfed and it was just, we pushed. Okay, you can do that. Okay, watch this, <laughs> you know? And, and that's what those guys are doing. It helps a lot to keep you motivated and keep you wanting to go out every day. You see one of your friends get a good wave and you're stoked for them. You're like, fuck, that was sick. But you're kind of like, oh, fuck that. I want to get a better one than that. No, we'll do something gnarly. And then it'll be like, McConnell will try to beat that. And then me and Baron will try to beat that. It's like this thing of like, you're never gonna like be the best one in the group for a certain amount of time. Do this with the punks now. We're pushing out of bed, out of bed. We just want the gunk sound and don't so out of it, out of it, out of it. Calm down, calm down, calm down. I promise it's safe. We always have this inside joke with McConaughey and his dad. Like, we'll always be like, fuck, McConaughey breaks so many boards, Uncle Dennis. And he'll be like, fucking yeah, I know this kid broke three like yesterday. Hey, Uncle Dennis, how heavy is it? McConaughey is breaking all of his boards. Yeah, he breaks so many freaking boards. Like I come home, he comes home from surfing. And I look in the back of his truck, I go, oh, you didn't break any good. As soon as I hear the car pull up at 7.30, I go, he broke another one. Guaranteed. And then I, I come out, there's two pieces in the, 
on the lawn and then he's grabbed another one and splits back to the waves. He just wants them light and he's pretty small so he make them thin, you know, and they gotta be light no matter what. How does that feel? Perfect. It'll be better. They're all 18, yeah? They're all 18. <clears throat> we came up, we came out a quarter inch, um, maybe one eighth on some of them. Widen it a little bit, that's all, you know? Proportionally, the nose and tail got wider. Don't hit the tips, dork. <laughs> <laughs> Don't break them. <laughs> Don't break them. You got that picture, right? This is an Eddie. This is an Eddie invitation trophy. And that's one over there. So this is um, my dad, 1943, Waikiki. And my dad was a, a paddler. This is my dad's canoe club. That's the Moana in the background. So he was a beach boy. Beach boy, they, were, they took out tourists. Um, on canoes, surfboard lessons, and they got paid for it. They, they were basically hired by the hotels. It was really informal, it was a lifestyle, and they just took care of all the tourists and they hustled all the tourist chicks, and it was a really fun time for them. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so he, he was, so he, this is him when he's 16 years old. Okay, in Waikiki at Canoes, and that's a redwood board. Then there's myself in the Eddie, the 1990 Eddie. But because my dad was a beach boy, I like to keep all these, these pictures around, and that's where we got our water DNA. That's where it all comes from. So Keiki, was basically our our playground growing up. Once we got old enough to ride bikes and go wherever we wanted to, that was kind of our meeting place after school. It's actually like like a like a part of it's like a part of us, you know. Like we've spent so much time like fucking around on that shore break and having fun there and hanging out there. And we love getting barreled. Like we'll do anything trying to get barreled. We started just going there, whether it was just using a boogie board, beating up surfboard or like even like an air mattress. Like we used an air mattress one year. We took out a mattress, McConaughey had the fins and he would like paddle on the back of it and we'd all catch waves on it and just get absolutely detonated. We're all together, we're all doing something exciting and watching our friend get sucked over and watching the waves go Pff. Our friends are on the beach and they're, and they're tripping, you know? <laughs> when a set comes in, we're like, oh! There's no like trying to do this air, trying to get this barrel, it's just kind of like, go on this triple up sandbar closeout. It's like, whoa! That's some nice glassy conditions. Six to eight, firing keiki with some dirty water. Play tough, put Benny on him, we open it up, open it up I fuck from the back while I'm choking up Two, two, threes, they go through a truck, somebody get hit It's no getting up, no getting up, no getting up Trippin' on niggas, they soaking it up Walk in the spot with a big ass dirty on nigga Get fucked with poking the what? 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 
Kiki's kind of what got us to be as comfortable as we are at pipe. It's just a straight closeout. So you're out there trying to make the drop and get barreled and you're falling 95% of the time. You know, practicing that over and over again is, is really helpful when you go to waves like chokes or pipeline. All I can call it is organized chaos. But out in the lineup, when you've put in the time, you know your place. And a lot of kids try and skip that process of just watching it, observing it, and then slowly earn your place in the priority system. John, Nate, Ivan, Eli, Kieran, we all just spent every swell out there, even if it was good or bad. Because we went through that, I fully noticed and watched when Makana and his crew started to do that. I see Makana out at Pipeline more than I see any of his friends. When it's shitty, rain or shine, Makana is out there every single time. The way he looks at waves and where he sits is he'll go on like the craziest closeout double up where I'm like, why did Makana just go on that? Once Makana's like in the spot and he's top of the pecking order and he's got all that practice behind him of going on pretty much every wave out there, I think he's gonna be one of the best pipe surfers of all time. He's always chasing it, but it's almost like it's never enough. Pipeline is Makana's drug. Yeah, so he's got that pipe fucking, he's got the pipe fucking addiction.
Went, okay, let's think about all the nicknames I got for this kid. I got M Pang. I got 
Wangman, the Hangman. We got Wubby. We got Bubbles. We got Lollipop. You know why Lollipop? Little body, big head. <laughs> nah. Mighty Mouse got fucking idiot. Pipe addicts. Love that. Pipe smokers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not tooting his horn or tooting my horn or anyone's horn. <laughs> it's funny though too, because he actually like surfs a lot though. <laughs> he really does surf a lot. I remember talking to Baron and Baron being like, bro, like I told McConnell, like you need to like chill and like not surf so much. You're going to like fucking blow yourself out. <laughs> Cause he just, you know, he's like, he's all red, you know, you get all red and he's like, his skin is like this hairless mole rat and he just surfs all day and he gets all red and he's just like fucking eggy. <laughs> I told a Grom last winter, he was paddling in front of me and I'm looking to my left and right and it's Jamie and another guy and he's paddling in front of me and he's just this younger generation kid. And I got him and said, what are you doing? Look around you. You're not in this crew. This isn't your level. You're by the photographers still. Like you need to know your place and earn it as you grow up. You don't just get to skip the line. He turned around and went back there. He tried to tell me he surfed pipe for five years. I was like, no, bro. No, you didn't. You're five years old. You didn't surf pipe for five years. It's definitely fun to get pounded, but McConnell like definitely is like gets pounded and he's just like, oh yeah, like, you know? It's a it's a you know, it's a little buzz. I think <laughs> I feel like he's just like. I don't know, I like to get pounded. <laughs>